going to quickly start off this lesson as we do every lesson. Homework module five, uh, lesson six, that should be answered online inside Google Classroom or the 30 minutes of additional Imagine Math. Um, make sure you're checking your tracker and keeping up with your assignments. Today we're going to look at sample sizes and possible outcomes, particularly with compound probabilities. Today you guys are going to use lists, tables, and tree diagrams in order to determine sample space and possible outcomes in probability experiments. And you know you have this when you get 80% or higher on today's quizzes involving sample space and possible outcomes. Our standard has changed to 7SPC8, which deals with finding probability of compound events. So we are still sticking to probability, but we're talking about compound events, which we'll discuss throughout the lesson. Just a reminder of what probability is, we have this probability scale, and it's the likelihood of something happening ranging from 0 to 1, um, where the greater the number, the higher likelihood that event is of happening. And keep in mind, you can write the probabilities as ratios or fractions or percentages. We're going to start with looking at this question, and we're going to come back to this at the end of the lesson, like we've been doing recently. So Cameron packed two pairs of shorts, looks like green and blue, um, and, and three t-shirts for the weekend trip. And based on the picture, it looks like yellow, white, and orange there. What are some combinations of shirts and shorts that Cameron can wear while on his trip? And how many days will we have or will he have a different outfit to wear? Well, we're going to, like I said, come back to this at the end. But he could, for instance, wear a yellow short, a shirt and green shorts here. That's one possible combination. What I want you to think through here before I go through the slide, how many total combinations could he wear making sure that each day is a different outfit? Now we're going to keep that in mind. We're going to take a look at a video. How can you represent all the possible outcomes or sample space of a compound event? Think about this question during the lesson. Haley has two sisters and no brothers. Josh has two brothers and no sisters. They wonder what the chances are in a family with three children that the children will be all boys or all girls. How can they determine all possible combinations of boys and girls in a family with three children? The first step is to list the different events. How many events describe a family with three children? Select your answer. In this case, each birth of a child represents a different event. And since in this case we have families of three, that is three separate births, assuming um, there are no twins, or even if there are, twins can be um, boy and girl. They don't have to be the same gender. So in this sense, this is three events. The three events are the births of the three children. Each child is either a boy or a girl. This is an example of a compound event. A compound event consists of two or more events. This compound event consists of three events. Our next step is to make a tree diagram to represent the sample space. The diagram begins with child one, who is either a boy or a girl. That's two outcomes so far. For each outcome for child one, there are two outcomes, boy or girl, for child two. And for each outcome for child two, there are two outcomes for child three. The tree diagram shows all the possible outcomes of the compound event. For example, we can follow the branches on the left side of the diagram, which shows the outcome of a boy, then another boy, then a third boy. Label this outcome BBB. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at this, what is called a tree diagram. Um, and this tree diagram is in three stages because three separate events happened. Um, and off each individual 
um, event possibility, you have two branches to represent the fact that the next child board could either be a boy or a girl. Now it stops here at this phase because we know three childs, three children, excuse me, were born, so there's no need to go on to the fourth level. But let's click, for instance, here. Okay, this represents boy, boy, girl. It's kind of like just you're following a pathway. Um, this would be boy, girl, boy, boy, girl, girl. Think about what this one here will be. All right, that one's girl, boy, boy. And I think hopefully you're getting the idea. So the total, total possible number of outcomes are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possible outcomes, each individual outcome having a one out of eight shot of happening. So for instance, the probability of getting all three boys is one out of eight. The probability of getting all three girls is also one out of eight. Now when you're looking at something like the prob probability of getting two boys, you need to follow any branch where you get two boys, um, like we do here like we do here, or like we do here. So that would represent a 3 out of 8 shot. Haley and Josh can make a tree diagram to show the sample space of boys and girls in a family with three children. The sample space has eight equally likely outcomes. The chances that a family with three children has all boys or all girls is two out of eight, or one-fourth. That's more likely than I thought. Now you know how to represent the possible outcomes of a compound event. What we are going to do now as you guys begin to take notes is we're going to dive deeper into tree diagrams, but we are also going to use other, other strategies, including making lists and making tables, all with the goal of figuring out compound probabilities. Now, compound probabilities exist when there is more than one event happening, like we just saw with the boys um, and the girls. There is multiple events, three births in that case, happening. Um, generally, previous to this lesson, we've been dealing with just one event. But compound probability um, introduces a little bit of complication. here. So let's look at this problem. Pause and write this down if you haven't done so already. A game is played by spinning the two spinners shown. The players match the results of the spinners to combinations on their game card. How many different combinations are possible? Now, I'm going to expose, or I'm going to figure this out um, with a tree diagram, but then I'm also going to show you guys a table afterwards. In our example uh, from the video, the tree diagrams were done vertically, but they can also be done horizontally, so I'm going to do this tree diagram horizontally. Whichever one you start with as like the first event, whether it's this red spinner or blue spinner, does not matter. This time we have two events happening. So I'm going to need a lot of room down here. And when you're creating uh, tree diagrams, that's one thing you got to pay attention to is your spacing. Now, um, on the first one, and I may even mess up this spacing. Let's see how this goes. On the first spinner, I'm going to start with this one. You can do A. You can do B. You can do C, and I'm already worried about my spacing. Let me <laughs> let me space this out a little bit more. You can do A, B, and I'm going to stop at C um, just because I think you'll get the pattern. You, you would technically need to go all the way to F. Now, off of this, if you spin A, you could have gotten 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or six, and sorry, my tree, my tree diagrams are not going to be the neatest. But one, two, three, four, five, or six, right? So with the very first, and let me try to make this at least slightly neater here. All right, that's gonna have to do. Um, so for the very first one, if you roll an A or spin an A, you can then either spin a one, two, three, four, five, or six. That represents here six outcomes.
I'm going to type this. <laughs> so that represents six outcomes. Now, um, what we can also look at is we need to look at the remaining options here. So if you basically spin a B next time, you would be in a similar situation where you'd have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so you would have a possible one, possible two, a possible three, four, five, six. And um, hopefully your tree diagrams end up being much neater than mine, but that is also six outcomes. Now, if you continue this pattern, I want you to think about how many possible outcomes you think C would have. Hopefully you know it's six. And then uh, D would have six, E and F. So you'd end up with six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. There's 36 total possible outcomes, okay? Um, now, <clears throat> if I wanted to list these out um, at, in list form, basically what you have is you could get A and then one, right? You could get A and then you could get a two so on and so forth, all the way to six. And then you would have to do the same thing with if you roll A or spun A, B, right? It would be, the, and then a C. And this pattern would continue until you get all the possible combinations. Um, and that would end up being 36. Now, if we wanted to display this as a table, um, which in this circumstance, the tree diagram is honestly not the best tool because there are so many um, possible outcomes within each individual event because there's six and then there's six here. Um, so a table is a good rule of thumb and it creates our list, right? In the blue one, you can do one, two, three, four, five, or six. And in our red spinner, you can do A, B, C, D, E, or F. And then wherever they meet, you can just list it. So you can get A1, you could also get B1, C1, D1, E1, and then F1. Uh, you could also get A2, and then the pattern just continues all the way down, and you end up with 36 possible outcomes. Now, some of you are probably trying to figure out a way um, to do this quickly mathematically without needing to draw anything, but you'll get there over time. I'm not going to tell you that quite yet because I want you to utilize the visual element, so you get a deeper understanding of how this compound probability is working. Let's take a look at this one. Madeline will roll a number cube uh, labeled one to six and flip a coin. What are all the possible outcomes? Use an organized list. So we're not gonna use a, t a tree diagram. We're just gonna write out the possible answers. Now, let's think about this. Say the first thing we flip is a heads. Well, it could be heads and I could get a one. I could get heads and a two, heads and a three, could get heads and then roll the number four, heads and five, and I can get heads and six, right? I'm rolling a dice, flipping a coin. So if I land on heads, I could, after I flip it and it lands on heads. With the dice, it could be anywhere one through six. Now, same thing if I flip and the coin landed on tails. I could get the same possibilities in terms of the, uh, the die. And here we go. So this is what's called the sample space. This is all the possible outcomes here. And what are all the possible outcomes? They're right here. And there are 12 possible outcomes. This is called, right here, is what is called the sample space. It is a list of the outcomes um, out of a, a potential compound probability situation. I have two more examples lined up for you guys, and what I'm going to actually ask you to do is write these down and solve them, and then use the video just to check your work. Um, the way you guys are going to really learn this is, is by practicing, and I say that often. Um, we can read it together, though. 
Um, the bag contains tiles labeled with the letters A, B, and C, and the box contains tiles labeled with the numbers 1, 2, and 3. Yadira draws one letter tile and one number tile. Represent the sample space using either a table or an organized list. So if we go back, you can either write the total outcomes like this in a list, or you can create a table. When you are done with that, please check the video. The sample space uh, for this example is made up of nine total possibilities. If you used a table, um, it could have looked something like this. You can also switch and put the letters vertically and the numbers horizontally, and it would have created the same combinations. This is the list right here. I just started writing A and then 1, 2, 3, B, 1, 2, 3, and then C, 1, 2, 3, which got the nine possibilities. I also went ahead and created a neater tree diagram going vertically kind of here. Um, this top part represents the first event. This bottom part, so this is first and this is second. You could also switch the order. It's not going to make a difference of the combinations of answers. Um, but at first, if I got an A, I could then get a 1, 2, or 3, B, 1, 2, or 3, and C, 1, 2, or 3. And because down here... We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 possibilities, right? B1, B2, B3, so on and so forth. Um, that makes the 9 total possibilities. Now, what I will say with uh, the tree diagram, you need to actually write the sample space. So, for instance, that's A1. Um, this here is A2, so on and so forth. You have to, this is the sample space. You got to make sure you actually write it out and not just say there are nine, unless the problem says how many total possible outcomes are they. Um, that's a separate question. All right, we got one more example here. I want you guys to try this, read through it, and check the video when you're done. The answer to this example problem is 12 combinations. This one doesn't ask specifically for the sample space, um, although you would kind of need to figure it out to calculate how many total, but it's just asking the total number of combinations. If you used a table, what I did is I put the uh, yogurt types across the top and the, um, excuse me, the mixes down the left-hand side, and then I just combined. Um, I needed to distinguish between blueberries and blackberries because they both started with B. So I put S blue and S black instead of just S B and S B twice because you don't want separate different things labeled the same way. All right, but you can see there's four here, four here, and four here, four, eight, 12 total. Um, if you went the tree diagram approach, um, I have the three yogurts here and I have the four add-ons branching off from our original choice of, of yogurt. Um, so we have four possible toppings with the strawberry, four with vanilla, and then four with the peach, which once again gets four, eight, and then 12. So we now have three strategies. We have just writing out a list, right? We have creating a table. We have creating tree diagrams. You need to be comfortable creating and analyzing all those different approaches. You'll see that today in your quizzes. This is a neater version of the table um, and what we have here. In this case, uh, this table labeled blackberries with an L, just a completely different letter. But notice there's that distinguishing uh, marking there. They didn't just put B twice because that indicates it's the same thing when in this case it's not. You can still see the 12 different um, outcomes that make up our sample space. Back to this example here, um, you should be able to answer this now. So this is a good check-in. Um, how many combinations, how many days will he have with a different outfit? Well, he can wear his green shorts and yellow shirt, right? He could also wear his green sh uh, shorts with a white shirt. And then he can wear his green shorts with the orange, right? And that takes care of all the pants, shirts combination with the green. Now, if we move on, I'm going to call that blue. We got blue and yellow, blue and white, and then blue and orange. 
So to address this question, um, what are some combinations of shirts and shorts? That's this sample space, right? It can be green, yellow, green, white, or green, orange, or blue, yellow, blue, white, blue, orange. But how many days? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six combinations. So he would be able to go six days without repeating any shirt, shorts, combos. Just a reminder, compound probability is an event or a combination of two or more events. We used organized lists today, we used tables, and we used tree diagrams. This example dealt with um, flipping two coins, okay? And this is this same scenario with different representations. If you have the list, you could get heads, heads, or heads, heads, tails. You can get tails, heads, tails, tails. You could have this table and then just mark the meeting points, or you can draw a tree diagram. If you need additional help specifically with tree diagrams, please consult the Khan Academy video. A lot of your quizzes questions today are going to directly deal with the utilization of those tree diagrams. So you need to complete the quizzes, title sample sizes, and possible outcomes. Same expectations as they have been. Please reach out for support as needed. And with that said, this is a reminder of office hours. You need to use them particularly if you know you are struggling.